you one of the best things about my job aside from the whole art thing obviously is that I get to work from home which I'm genuinely so thankful for because um, <laughs> I'm a socially anxious hermit and I love just not having to leave my home however that does mean that I spend every single hour of every single day in the same environment <laughs> And after a while, it can feel a little bit stale and like understimulating, you know? I made a studio revamp video back in 2019, I believe. So it's definitely now getting to the time where I want to change things up a bit again. I've been thinking about it for a few months now, but I never really took the time to sit down and properly plan it. Just always had so much going on. But in the last couple of months, I got sent something that sort of put it all back into motion. I received this desk. This is a standing desk by the company Sit Stand. I believe the model is Yo-Yo Desk Pro 2. This is the size XL, which is the biggest one they have, which is 180 by 80 centimeters, I believe, which is what my old desk used to be before I had standing desks, and it was the perfect size. So when they offered me this size of desk, I enthusiastically said yes. It's really powerful. I believe it can withstand 100 kilos on top of it. Now I'm able to use my giant desk easel. The rising and lowering are very smooth, so I don't have to worry about my paints or my tea spilling everywhere whenever I need to adjust the height. And you can pre-program three heights that it will adjust to instantly with just the press of a button. I have mine set at my sitting, my standing and my painting heights. And they also sent me their yo-yo mat active which helps with leg pain and standing for long periods of time by providing more support and when they sent me the desk they even sent an engineer with it to put it together for me <laughs> so i didn't even have to do the heavy lifting it was all put together for me which was wonderful if you'd like to check out the company that sent me the desk and if you'd like to check out the desk itself uh, i'll have all the links in the description below and the company is also offering a 50 pound coupon to orders 200 pounds and above up until december of 2022 i believe so all this information will be in the description if you would like to check them out So this desk is definitely one of my new favourite things in my studio now. But one of the things that I love about it, but also one of the biggest problems with receiving it was just how big it is. Because at that point in time, in the way my office was set up, I didn't have any space for it. So if I was going to be able to install this desk, I needed to reorganise my entire studio. And so I figured that if I was going to be doing that anyway, I might as well make it a whole revamp. So my studio is the second bedroom in the two bedroom apartment that my boyfriend and I rent in London. And because we rent, I'm fairly limited in the type of upgrades I can do to my studio, or even to our flat in general. So I can't paint the walls, I can't put up new wallpaper, I can't drill new holes. I can't put up floating shelves for example. So that sort of thing sort of limits how much of the vertical space I can use in my studio, which is a pity because our flat has really high ceilings, so if I was able to take advantage of it I would have so much more storage. Back in my 2019 studio revamp, I was doing everything on an even tighter budget than I have now, and so I was I bought a lot of stuff quite cheaply and I bought these flimsy wire shelves and to their credit they have withstand the test of time better than I was um, thinking they would. <laughs> As time goes by when you have a business like mine you accrue more and more supplies. I need to store packaging supplies in my office and I get more art supplies so I've slowly been gathering all my stuff on those shelves because they're the only shelves I have but I think they are definitely nearing their maximum load capacity <laughs> and uh, I have watched them get 
flimsier and flimsier as time has gone by. It was definitely time for a change with those particularly. Another thing that I really, really wanted to change was the floor in my office. Everything is carpeted in our flat, which is typical of English flats, but means it's quite difficult to clean if you get any paint stains and stuff on there. So in order to try and save as much of our deposit as we can, <laughs> I needed to protect my studio carpet. And when we first moved into this flat, I got a cheap rug from Ikea. I think it's an outdoor rug. And it's been the bane of my life ever since. It doesn't sit flat. It's ugly as hell. It doesn't even extend all the way to the edges of my studio, so stuff is like sitting half on it, half not, being all wobbly. I hated it so much. <laughs> so that was another thing that was high up on my list of things to change with this revamp. So I went to Ikea, as you do. I really wanted a giant shark. But before I could put all my new furniture together and uh, decide where everything was going to go the main thing that everything else hinged on was me figuring out where I was going to put my huge new standing desk so here's how things went first I had to decide where the big desk was going to go and I chose this corner which was the opposite corner of where my desk used to be because I figured I would be a bit closer to the window, get a bit more of an outdoor view and uh, I would be closer to my bird feeder. But first, that meant I had to get rid of all this mess or at least find a place for it. I gave this guy away. This guy went here, but in order for that guy to go there, I needed to transfer what was on these old wire shelves to my new IKEA shelves. But in order to put those IKEA shelves where I wanted them to go, I needed to move these white IKEA drawers. And I decided to move those white IKEA drawers to where my old non-standing desk used to be. The good news here was that I didn't need to find a new place for that big desk to go, I was just gonna give it away. So I did just that. <sighs> <laughs> Stay with me, but in order to do any of this, I had to deal with the floor first. You know that old carpet that I really hated? I found these big 50 by 50 centimeter floor tiles. They're the kind of thing that you find in dance studios, you know, in like gymnasiums or like martial arts studios or whatever, to cover the floor. It gives a bit of padding. Initially, I got some samples from the company to decide which colour I was going to go for. I wanted to get the full wood effect ones, but when they got here in the mail, they looked really awful. <laughs> I don't really know what I expected. So I decided to go for the plain white tiles in the end, which I'm actually really happy I did because I think it brightens up the room a little bit, makes it look a bit cleaner. Works, works quite well, frankly, I think, at least. And then I got a haircut, which is always an important part of any good revamp, in my opinion, you know. And then once I had done all of that, set up my new packaging station, set up my huge new shelves, moved everything around, donated what I wanted to, do to donate, got rid of anything that I didn't need anymore. There was one last project I had for my studio. I don't know about you, but I know I'm not the only one here. I've always drooled in front of those apothecary cabinets with lots of tiny drawers in them. They're so beautiful. They're also very expensive. <laughs> I cannot imagine a day where uh, I'd be able to justify that purchase or be able to afford a proper apothecary drawer cabinet. So I decided I would try my hand at sort of making myself one Kind of. So what I did is I had these little plywood drawers from Ikea for a while and I painted them to make them look a bit better but they just don't look great anyway. But I figured that if I glued a few together they could make quite a fun makeshift DIY apothecary cabinet style type of piece of furniture. So I gave that a go. When I went to Ikea I got myself a few of those 
apply with drawers and after a lot of staining and a lot of sanding and a lot of varnishing and a lot of gluing I made myself this I won't detail exactly how I made them in this video, but if you're interested in seeing the process of me turning those drawers into this cabinet, I am working on a short video that will either go on my Instagram Reels or my TikTok or both, depending, that details exactly how I created those. It's, along with my desk, one of my favourite pieces of furniture in my studio now. I'm so happy with them, they turn out so cool. Especially for something as cheap as those Moppet drawers from Ikea. Having that cabinet also means that I have like a nice little space to display some of my favourite things on top. So it's nice to have a place that displays them appropriately. And so here you have it. Here's a little summary of all the changes that occurred while I was redoing my studio and I'm personally really happy with it. It might not be perfectly Pinterest worthy or high tech or minimalistic or clean as some of the revamps out there on YouTube but I personally am super happy with it and I think that I'm going to be feeling a lot better about working in this space than I did in the previous space which is what counts. Before I leave you, I have a small collection of slightly creepy items that I think could be cool to share with you. So I figured that could be a fun note to end the video on, showing you the various creepy treasures I've got in my studio. What do you think? Yeah, let's do that. First off, here's a quick overview of what I'm displaying on my little cabinet. So the two creatures that you see here are creatures I sculpted myself years ago. This one is made of Sculpey. This one I actually sculpted out of monster clay and then made a mold of and cast in resin. This here, really hard to show you, is a preserved spider web and then this is my snail and then there's my silver play button right in the back right there so those of you who've been with me for a few years will know that before I was an artist I used to be a prosthetic makeup artist for the film industry in 2012 I did a makeup course with a makeup studio and part of the course was that you got to practice moulding people's faces and so you got your turn at being cast and I kept the cast of my face. That's the plaster cast of my face, young me from 2012. I don't know, it's quite cool to have a plaster face of yourself, basically a mortuary mask of yourself. Um, anyway, I think it's quite fun and quite cool and I did a fiberglass version because I wanted to practice painting skin tones on fiberglass. Next up is this face. Again, 
This is one of those items I did when I was studying prosthetic makeup. I saw the plaster face cast of myself while the workshop that I studied in had lots of lots of other people's face casts. And one of the exercises that we were tasked with when I was studying was to recreate one of those plaster casts by sculpting it in clay. Once we were done with that sculpture, we got to make a mould out of it and then cast it in silicon, which is this material and which is the material that most most film prosthetics are made out of nowadays. So once I had sort of sculpted the face, we got a mould out of it, and then out of that mould we got ourselves a silicon version of our sculpture. So obviously the face I sculpted was in 3D, not flat like this, but silicon is expensive so you don't tend to cast a, an entire face in solid silicon. So you just make what's called a skin as a first layer in the mould to pick up all the detail and get all that nice fleshy tones, texture and stuff that you may have sculpted. And then once you have a thick enough layer of silicon in your mould and it has set, you put a backing of foam on the back of it so that it maintains its shape. Over the years the foam has lost its moisture and shrunk and became a bit gross so I threw it away but I couldn't get myself to throw away the actual face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I still have it. Uh, and it's one of my favourite things, um, but everyone else hates it, which is fair, frankly, because it's creepy, especially when you're not the one who made it. Clearly I made it, so I have a bit of emotional connection to it. It's a bit sentimental as an object. But yeah, that's my floppy face. It's getting a bit sticky nowadays because, again, over time silicon sort of leeches a bit its oils and things so it's gross it's really gross now but I mean there's one day I'm gonna have to resign myself to throwing it away but today is not that day today I get to show you my floppy face just for a chat <laughs> so I like to keep treasures and this is my box these are obviously remnants from my prosthetic makeup days. I keep them because I keep wanting to get back into sculpting and I feel like these would go well in a sculpture if I want to have a placeholder for eyes and stuff like that. This is a little wooden oven that my dad made for me when I was eight because I had a little dollhouse, a miniature dollhouse, and it didn't have an oven in it and it drove me insane because I wanted to pretend to cook things. And so my dad made me a little oven, so that's what that is. I have a plastic vertebrae because um, who doesn't? I have some fiberglass doll hands. I have no recollection of why I have these, where I got them from. Um, but you know, it's one of these items that feels like bad luck to throw them away. <laughs> don't throw away a doll that you don't know where it came from. I feel like it might get upset at you. But um, yeah, this is just the arms. I'm not entirely sure what I'm ever going to be doing with them. But also I'm a bit afraid of throwing them away. So they're gonna stay in my treasure box um, forever. <laughs> this is my little cicada. It has a little bumblebee friend next to it, which was a surprise when I opened it. I remembered having the cicada. I didn't remember putting a little bumblebee next to it, which is adorable. And then last from this box are these two fiberglass ears. They were off cuts from casts in a workshop I worked in when I was a prosthetic makeup artist again. I asked if I could have them because they would be great to practice painting on. They are just white fiberglass. And I painted them with some inks to try and see how realistic I could get them. I can't get myself to throw them away either. I quite like having random ears floating around my studio. Yeah. And then I have one last thing to show you, which I personally think is the coolest thing I own, frankly. I don't think I'll ever be able to top it. I don't think I'll ever own anything as cool as that. Hopefully they'll still fit me for years to come because I love them to bits. And that is... These guys. Look at these guys. Look at them. Aren't they the coolest thing ever? They are super sharp. 
they're acrylic and the reason I have them is because of this again when I used to be a prosthetic makeup artist can you understand me while I'm wearing these <laughs> let me take them out taking them out is gross so basically, again, back when I was a prosthetic makeup artist, we had this trade show every year called IMATS, International Makeup Artist Trade Show. Some of my colleagues would do various demos and makeup demos and would get the full prosthetic makeup ready for the show. And they needed models. And a colleague of mine, my, my old makeup teacher, asked me to be his model a couple of times. And one of the makeups he did on me was this makeup. I got to wear some super cool Sclera lenses, but he also got these dentures made for me, which are made to fit my teeth so they click on and they stay on, they don't budge at all. Unexpectedly, I got to keep those dentures, which I'm just forever thankful for because they're the coolest thing I own. And I keep trying to come up with ideas of cool makeups I could make to go with the dentures for Halloween and stuff. Um, it's just I never really have the time to do that so it's a pity but one day I'll put them put something together to honor them properly <laughs> so I think this is it for this video yeah this is an awkward angle to film at uh, I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you enjoyed the studio revamp the new look and the creepy things that I've shared with you that I own and love and uh, I'll see you very soon in fact probably in a couple of weeks for another video this time with some art in it and i uh, hope that you'll join me then and that you are well uh, taking care of yourselves and all that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you very soon bye